Hi, I'm Ray Bobel, and this is the Beauville and Newtown Railroad, or Model Railroad. Well, good evening, track gang, and welcome to vlog 25 for 2021. It happens to be July 2nd, uh, 2021, and yes, <laughs> we're back at the bench again. Why are we back at the bench? Well, um, I made mention in vlog 24 that I usually do something a little special uh, for uh, the 4th of July, and that's two days away. So, um, and as you all know, or most of you probably know, I went ahead and I had a, a mail call earlier um, from uh, the train freak, and it happened to involve this guy. Um, and if you notice, if you actually go back and watch the old video, this thing looks a lot cleaner than what it did. Um, what I did, and I didn't video, I didn't record it but what I ended up doing is I ended up going into um, uh, using one of the bathrooms down using the bathroom that's down here sorry I'm gonna I gotta trim this mustache it's driving me nuts um, <laughs> anyway a little bit of hand soap and an old uh, a rag and I warm water and it got rid of 98 percent of the stuff that was on here um, it's a little faded um, which isn't that big of a deal um, because we you know we don't want things to be extremely shiny but I figure a locomotive like this um, from any of the railroads would probably try to be kept somewhat clean um, because they are you know special locomotives although I am noticing these days watching the Norfolk Southern and their uh, heritage units um, they've got quite a bit of road miles on them and they're starting to look a little dingy um, so I, I really wonder how much longer they're going to run them. Um, but anyway, so we're here at the bench because not only did I go ahead and clean the shell, I'm going to dig into something that has been asked by a few members in the community, Nisi J being one of them, um, about how you do maintenance on a locomotive that has traction tires. Well, it just so happens that this particular locomotive is supposed to have traction tires. And it just so happens I've got two pairs left. <laughs> so we're going to dig into that in a couple of minutes. I need to go ahead and get some things together over here at the bench, and we'll, uh, we'll show you how it's done, or at least how I do it, which may not be right, but it gets done. Okay, so our first thing is, is we have to uh, take this thing apart. which really just requires pulling two screws. And getting the gear case cover out of the way. I'm going to have to clean these gears up while I'm in here too, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to <clears throat> um, try something a little bit different than what you had seen me use in the past. 
because it seemed to work so well on the track. We're going to try a little bit of mineral spirit on the wheels themselves. Let's see if we can clean them up. And all I did was just put a little bit of that on the rag here and I'm just kind of spinning the spinning it by hand. I should have shown the before and after because this is uh, that's insane. I'm not sure even how well that's shown up on camera but that was the this is the one that's going to have the traction tire on it and you can kind of kind of see I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll pull the other one out and you can kind of see the dirt that's on maybe that's on there so we're going to do the same thing probably have to put a little bit more of the mineral spirit on the rag here make sure I grab the right side And for the side that's going to get the traction tire, it really doesn't have to be cleaned because it's going to be um, I'm just going to have the traction tire on it anyway, so it's not going to be it's going to be insulated or isolated, regardless. Perfect. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll take that for five dollars. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to take a dry part of this and just kind of get out any type of debris that's inside the wheel here. That looks pretty good. Now you can laugh at this, but one of the things that I will tell you, it's kind of helpful to have some have a little bit of nail left on your fingers. <laughs> the they actually get in there because there is a groove uh, with these, um, and anybody that's dealt with traction tires can tell you that there actually is it is groove. There is a flange, an extra flange on the outside that helps hold the <coughs> traction tire on there. Now I've got my last four traction tires sitting in here and did I actually bring over a no I didn't well, that's okay because I got one right here this part is a little ticklish and that is getting these uh, around the wheels uh, correctly now a lot of people would say you're probably better off maybe putting them into a into some warm water to get them to soften up a little bit. Uh, I've never I've never done it that way. I've always kind of just stretched them over and then gotten it to line up the way it's supposed to. And that is one of the nice things with these Stort uh, traction tires is the fact that they do stretch a little bit and they will eventually conform back to where they're supposed to be and these are kind of nice too because they're clear and that's it um, you just put it back in now the biggest thing to remember is which way they came out which I do happen to remember the traction tires were towards me so we'll go ahead and we'll do the other wheel here Like I said, it is a little fiddly, and once you get it started, I'm not even sure if this is showing up on the camera because I'm not paying attention to the camera. There we go. Now what I'm doing is, is I'm just trying to make sure that everything lined back up where it was supposed to as far as getting that traction tire in place now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and 
What did I do with that gear? Oh, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and clean these or wipe these up a little bit. Before I go ahead and put, uh, put them back in here and then uh, put some new grease on them. Because they do need to be greased. Now one thing I'm not going to bother with with this is I'm not going to worry about um, converting it over um, to having the rear wheels pick up power and then the front wheels pick up power on the opposite side. I've done that with a couple of my other AHM C liners. It works very well. It, but it's not something that you want to play with on camera. It is a it is not an easy process. And I think I may have actually shown it once or twice before. So, now, we're at the point where we can put a little bit of gear lube on this dude. Now, some people would probably be going, that was a little bit much, but this thing is extremely dry. And I want to make sure that it's in decent shape. I forgot to snap that back shut. Now, I'm not going to bother putting the coupler box back on here yet. There's a reason. Uh, the coupler box for this thing was a little was a little goofed up. Uh, I need to do some modifications to it just to be able to put any type of a coupler on here. So that'll come at a later time. So this one won't be actually pulling anything for the for the uh, for the fourth. I may have it running on the railroad, but it won't be pulling anything yet. If I get the chance to actually mess with it then so be it. If I don't, then it's not a, a huge, huge thing. Now what I could do, and I think I've already mentioned this before, what I actually could do is I could take one of the other AHM frames that I've got that does run, and I could swap shells and put the 76 on a, a shell that can pull cars, and I may end up doing that. But for the sake of the moment, we're going to go ahead and just run, we'll just run him with nothing behind him. Now, since I'm sitting here at the bench and I've got my, and of course I closed it, and I've got my mineral spirit sitting here and it works so well on the rear wheels, we're going to take the front wheels off. And we're going to do the same thing. Now, this is something, like I said, you all know me, and for years, and in fact up to... Uh, the uh, vlog 23 I had always cleaned my track and cleaned my wheels with crocus cloth um, I now realize that that may not have been the way to go um, so be it you live and you learn now the front wheels obviously are a little bit different there is actually a and I'm not sure if it's going to show up on the camera or not but there's actually little feelers that have to be brought back into place when I go to snap the wheel back in. So that's fine. That's not a big deal. The neat thing with these two is these are completely isolated, insulated so it doesn't matter which way they go back in because right now the front wheels are the only pickups. So what they did is they actually ran the wheels uh, with a plastic axle for isolation. Alright. First off, I'm sure that's going to, hopefully it shows up. You can see how, even though they do look a little bit shiny on the camera, trust me, when I get done, they'll be even cleaner. And I'm loving the fact that this is uh, odorless mineral spirits. Um, it's a little bit healthier, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Now, um, one of the things that you want to do, too, thinking about this, 
is you not only want to make sure that the wheels get cleaned on the flange side, but you also want to make sure that they get cleaned on the inside where the actual pickup is. Because if that's not clean, it's not going to matter how clean the wheels are, it's still not going to pick up anything, power-wise. And that's looking pretty good, compared to the way that the other set of wheels looks like in here. So I'm going to put those down. I'm going to grab the other set. And I'm going to put a little bit more I mean this stuff isn't exactly completely odorless but it doesn't have a real a real heavy smell to it so let's go ahead and see what we can do with this pair of wheels And I can see it taking the corrosion and everything else off of here. It's kind of hard to show that on the camera, but trust me, there was um, there was like a white corrosion on these wheels, and it's it's coming off with just the with just the mineral spirits, which is outstanding. Yeah, I've definitely found a new way to clean clean my locomotive wheels. There's no doubt about that. No doubt. Now this one here seems to have some other schmutz on it. And I think that's just wear. Okay. Alright, now. We can close that back up so it doesn't spill. Getting these back in place. The easiest way I've found to do this is to take a pair of tweezers and pull the feelers back in. Now with unfortunately with this pair of tweezers I kind of have to bring them out just a little bit extra to be able to get over the chassis here. But there we go. They're back in place. So let's go ahead and get our screws back in. As soon as I figure out what I did with the uh, the coupler box that was on the front of here. There we go. This is the good one. It's actually the frame that's broke on the back side. It's not so much the coupler box itself, it's the, the frame that's bad. Um, somebody apparently, I guess, snapped it off at some point, probably trying to convert it to Katie's, is what I, my, my thought is. Or it could have just been, it could have just broke. Regardless, I can. I think I might be able to rig it up. Alright. It's the back screw. And of course I missed. <laughs> I missed a coupler box. I'll just have to... There we go. There we go. Alright, so before I put the shell bag on it, I know that that wasn't showing up, but 
There it is. Bingo. All right. <laughs> oh, wrong way. Sweetness. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple drops of oil on, on top of that uh, motor tower. That'll definitely help to calm it down a little bit more. Uh, and then we'll we'll take him out to the layout and see what we get. So we'll be back in a bit. Now, I wanted to show this before I started running it so that way somebody wouldn't say, oh, wait a minute, he went ahead and switched cells. No, I didn't. This is the original. This is the original frame. There's no coupler back there. But get a load of this. And right now that's at 35%. I'm not going to go chasing it around because I'll make you all sick. I'm going to go ahead and bring him up just a little bit. That's 40%. And I've always said that these AHMs have their own sound. These old C-liners and the BL2s. And I'm trying to think. I think I've actually got another style locomotive that was done by AHM. They have a very distinct growl to them. And when he comes back around front, I'll just let him let you all listen to it. So I'm going to swing here and catch him as he circles around what will be Newton's farm. But that's impressive. Forty percent. Unreal. Well, I've always talked about the reason why I don't like running. And that just gives me another reason not to run this one. I may end up taking the show off of here anyway. Um, <laughs> because the uh, the truck is uh, has come apart. And I'm not sure what the deal is there. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, this locomotive is a lifelike. And it's one of the older style that's actually got the gears exposed. Now, like I said, I just realized that the cover for the uh, rear truck is loose, so he's not going to run anyway. So we're going to have to put in a we're going to have to put a different frame under him. So give me a minute. All right, I got two of the 1776s running right now, or 13 Colony, or whatever you want to call it. Um, the AHM locomotive is actually pulling the train miniature cars, and I wish it was going a little bit slower. Um, but I am missing a couple. Uh, those were in that box of stuff that I had gotten a couple years ago. And one of the other things I noticed with, um, that's actually uh, the frame for the Redding locomotive that I've got. And for some stupid reason, um, that frame is a little different than the frame that was under the 76. Um, the 76 actually, the front of it's cut down a little bit. Um, I guess because the number boards are supposed to be lit up on that locomotive and not on the Redding. So, um, a couple of things I could do. I could go ahead and modify the frame or I can go ahead and get the one for the 76 fixed, which I think I'm going to try and get the one for the 76 actually fixed. Um, now, you kind of caught off underneath the, uh, the second deck there. Um, the other one, which is the lifelike. Um, what I ended up doing was taking the frame that was underneath the uh, New England Berkshire and Western, which is an a, uh, an Atherin unit. And I actually stuffed it up underneath of the 76 <laughs> uh, shell from Lifelike. Uh, so that one could go ahead and pull because um, it's... Uh, okay. 
because its uh, its frame is a little goofed up. And of course, as soon as I turn on the camera, that's when everything decides it wants to start going haywire. So you've got that one coming again. I gotta stop this. I gotta stop the life light one for a minute. I lost part of the train underneath of the city. Alright, let's go ahead and turn the life like one back on. And like I said, of course, everything was running fine. Until the camera goes on. So this is the life like unit. This is uh this is third the 13 colony set that they did back in 1976. It's uh, what seven refrigerator cars and six gondola cars, and the uh, train miniature one is nothing but box cars. So that's it for these two. I've actually got one more to put up. So give me a minute. You know, sometimes I don't think. <laughs> um. What I'm going to do here, because of the fact that you only saw the run by, this is the New York car, Mr. Heath. <laughs> and of course, I just put that in New Jersey's box. I don't think they'd be too, be too happy with me there. New York is over here, dum dum. And yes, these do get packed away. All right, so we've got New Jersey. I think that might be Mr. Satz. Actually, he might be he might be Pennsylvania. We'll get there. Well, we had a New Jersey. That's what Delaware. Uh, Delaware. <clears throat> and then the other week we were talking about shelf queens. I've got box queens. <laughs> Believe that this would be Rhode Island. And no, these aren't put on the train in any particular order. It just happens to be whatever they, however they come out of the box. I probably ought to put them in as they became states, but, you know, that would take too much time. Well, the home state. That would be Maryland, and I believe that would cover me, Hot Rod Rodney, and Anthony Pettit from the Georgia Sun Belt. along with uh, Mr. Joe Rader and I believe that there's a couple others on YouTube that are from the from the area or originally from the area unfortunately some of these 
names are so worn out I can't see them. But this looks like the state of Georgia. Now when I bought this set off of eBay, I knew that the boxes were shot. And they pretty much are. But I didn't buy them for the boxes, I bought it for the cars which were in great shape for the age. Uh, this would be New Hampshire. Not sure if we have any uh, YouTubers from the great state of New Hampshire, but there you go. I gotta remember Okay. Actually, I think, yeah, that was in there like that. And then, we'll start going in the back. All right, now we're getting into the gondola cars. And the first one we get is the state of Virginia. And of course, that is not the, not the box for that car. That is actually South Carolina. But the state of Virginia. Ah, crossed anchors, Brian and Mike, along with a host of others from the great state of Virginia. Actually, it should be the Commonwealth of Virginia, but we won't go there. Okay, into the great state of South Carolina. I spent four years or three, uh, almost three years down there. Nineteen eighty nine to nineteen ninety two. Yes, I was actually in South Carolina when Hurricane Hugo decided to rip in the new rear end. All right, let's see here. I have the state of North Carolina. too many people from this state. Let's see, we've got Lockawatta Rail Fan, we've got Ian, or let, let's see, that's Tyler. We've got Ian from the uh, Lehigh River Subdivision. Uh, John, number two, from the Schoolkill River Valley. Uh, just to name a few from the great state of Pennsylvania. Let's see who's next. Oh, we've got the state of Connecticut. I wonder if John's counting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> And then last but not least, we got the state of Massachusetts. Uh, Boston. All right. And then last but not least, bringing up the rear of the train, we have the Spirit of 76 Caboose. And that is the whole lifelike Spirit of 76 set. Alright, so that's one set down. We've got to go ahead and pack up the train miniature, so i got to bring that box over here and uh, we'll work on him. So give me a minute. Okay, so for the moment, because of the fact that I don't actually have a caboose to pull or to behind this one here, we were using the transfer caboose, which is a spare. And this one here, if you notice, is that one that I was talking about. This is one of the ones that was set up for a long haul. It's KD'd on this end and hook horned on this end. And there was a reason why he was behind this particular train. Uh, now the only problem is, is my boxes, I think, for these got all goofed up here. So we got to... <laughs> I got to go ahead and shuffle the boxes here a little bit. Oh, there's New Hampshire. 
Now these did not have any type of an insert. So anyway, there is the great state of New Hampshire and this is a 100% KD car. Which is the reason why I needed to use a caboose with KD couplers. Because this train with the exception of I think it's Georgia and South Carolina and if you're wondering what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to fix the sole thing that decided to fold. And it's still folding. Oh, come on. I'm going to have to get some tape on some of these. I'm going to tape the cellophane back in place. Anyway, so there's the state of New Hampshire. Uh, let's see, now we've got Rhode Island. And this is another one that's 100% KD. But there's the state of Rhode Island. And as I've mentioned, I do not have every car for this set. I have looked to see if I can find the ones I'm missing. Um, I have had very limited success. Um, so, it's not, if it's one of these things, this set comes out once a year, specifically for the 4th of July. So it's not like it's running all the time, and I don't want to run it all the time, because as far as I'm concerned, these are, these are special. This is a special train. Um, train miniatures did these, you know, for, for a reason. Um, and they were done for, uh, you know, for the... Uh, 13 colony, which would be the, the 76. There's the state of New York, Heath. Now you're going to ask me which ones I'm missing. I believe Virginia is one of them. I believe. Um, I'm not sure what the other one is. Let me, let me see here. I got one, two, three, four. Um, you know what? I think I just put New York and New Jersey's. No, that's Massachusetts. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somehow or other, New York ended up in Massachusetts. That's not going to work. Keep them in the right boxes. All right, so now New York is back in its correct box. Okay. New Jersey is the one I'm looking for now. There's New Jersey. What a Delaware. A brand new Jersey. Delaware might be the other one that I'm I'm missing. I think I, I had it written down at one point, and I know somebody was actually trying to help me out and look for them. Sorry. Um but yeah, like I said, somebody at one point in time was trying to help me out and, and look for them. But I did, never did get around to actually finding them. So now we've got the great state of Maryland. Again, Mr. Joe Rader, Georgia, the Georgia Sun Belt, Mr. Anthony Pettit, Hot Rod Rodney, myself, and a few others. All right, well, let's see who we've got. We've got the great state of Massachusetts is the next one. And like I said, those were all KD. You know what? I think I forgot to put one on. <laughs> I certainly did. There's the state of Connecticut. <laughs> I, forgot to, I forgot to put him on there. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> Shoot me. Alright, so we got the great state of Georgia. The peach state. There we go. One of the neat things with these, I'm not sure if anybody is picking up one. Um, they've got the state flag uh, on the one side. And we've got the state of South Carolina next. So on this side, you got the state. You got the state flag, and of course, the the state is on the opposite. So, like I said, eventually, like I said, we are missing Pennsylvania, 
and we're missing Virginia. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm, uh, this is 10, so I'm missing three of them. Pennsylvania, Virginia uh, are two of them. So eventually, I will find them. Um, I just haven't looked real hard because it wasn't high on the priority list. So now they're all back in their box. But I still have one more train, so we'll be back. There is always that thing when you run something that doesn't normally get run that there's going to be issues. Well, I just had issues, so. But there's the another 76 train. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the camera back up here to the other end. Um, and I'm actually going to back him up um, a little bit here. Maybe. <laughs> I'm really taking a chance now. Alright, so what we've got here is, and I'm going to raise the camera up so hopefully I don't shake it too bad. Alright, so what we've got here, this is a bit of a conglomeration folks, because these are actually Tyco cars. This is a combination car, it's a baggage and coach. And the reason, well, I'll get to something here in a minute, but anyway, so this is old time coach, old time combine. Alright, so we'll put him back in his box and put him back in the box. Now, when I bought these, when I got these cars, they actually came with another locomotive. That locomotive does not run uh, at all. It's a old Tyco uh, 460. And it is a pain in the butt. This is a normal coach. Um, old time coach. Um, I, it's the second one that my family has had. And both of them run like garbage. Um, and I've messed, I've fiddled, I've played with it. I can't get it to work. So it's actually back in the repair box. Now, the original 1776 set that came from Tyco did not have two combines. It actually had two coaches and a combine. So, whoever had this set that I bought off of eBay, I kind of got, got uh, shafted. Uh, because I don't think that this was the original set. So, it is what it is. Um, I've, got, so I've got the cars. I'm, I'm happy that I've got the cars but it really would have been nice to have the right cars. Um, and then we get down to the locomotive, which is coming apart. This is actually a lifelike, what they call a tea kettle uh, locomotive. It's actually a tank locomotive. It's got the coal back here, the water is actually stored up here, and of course the boiler is down the center. It's a very unique locomotive. Um, this is actually the second one that I've had. Uh, I actually had one that was uh, done up for the Baltimore and Ohio and a few years ago there was a there was a guy um, I can't remember if he was on Facebook or if he was on YouTube but either way um, he was fascinated with the locomotive. He had never seen one and he actually traded me a couple of other locomotives for that one. So I was like, okay, fine, because the only reason why I originally bought it was for parts. So, but that's a lifelike tea kettle. Um, and I was going to try and run something else that doesn't get run, but the cars aren't playing nicely. And that is this set of Maryland and Pennsylvania cars. Uh, this here was a express agency car. Railway Post Office, Old Time Railway, Railroad Post Office. There's another one of those unique coach combines, or coach baggage cars. Um, not quite sure what this car was. This looks to be an observation um, with the back deck. And then this one in here was just a normal coach. Uh, these also came from that that box of stuff that I'd gotten a few years ago and I thought that they were working but apparently they're not. 
Um, my guess is, is I've got to go through and do some uh, regaging of the wheels because they would not stay on the track. Well, this video has gone on long enough. Um, it was originally supposed to be Vlog 25, which it kind of is. Um, it's also the 4th of July special, so happy 4th of July to all of my followers, to my patrons. Um, you know, I'm sure that there is still some folks that are kind of not real happy about the revolution, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> so, anyway... You all know the deal. Wait for the high ball. Green tracks ahead. We'll catch you all next time. Be safe. God bless. We'll see ya. Oh, stop. <laughs>